battery protection. So this one isn't talked about a lot, but it is quite important to make sure that your battery installation meets the standard and, and obviously everything else that um, comes along with that with, with regards to insurance and, and um, the like. Um, first of all, the battery needs to meet IEC 62619. That's a completely separate standard um, and there are differing views on what that actually means, but the battery manufacturer that you've purchased the battery from should be able to provide you with a certificate which states the battery is compliant with 62619. That's the first thing. The second thing is the BMS needs to continuously monitor. Now, continuously means permanently connected to, now, not be switched off, not have the ability to be turned off. Um, over voltage and under voltage, over temperature and under temperature, and over current. So those five things need to be, need to be able to be monitored by the BMS. Now, most battery manufacturers that you go to and purchase a battery will have a BMS inbuilt into the battery. There are some manufacturers that are still building batteries that have an external BMS. Either way, um, that BMS needs to be installed within 600 mil of the battery. So when you buy a battery in a, in a container, off the shelf battery, that's, that complies as long as it meets all those standards. Um, if you buy one that has an external BMS, that BMS needs to be installed within 600 mil of the battery. The third thing with regards to battery protection is it needs to have a battery monitor. Now, this is a really important part of the installation in my view, um, because it takes away um, the, uh, most of the issues associated with drop-in batteries. So, there are some manufacturers of batteries out there which are promoting their battery as being able to be connected to any charger without issue. They can't do that anymore because you now need to have a battery monitor. Now, battery monitor in accordance with the standard needs to be able to monitor voltage and state of charge. If you have a battery system that's an AGM battery system and you change that over to um, lithium and you leave your charges as AGM charges, you do not have a compliant system because you do not have a battery monitor in that system that is compliant to that lithium battery. So that's the first thing. Let's talk about battery location. This one here is probably the one out of everything that has caused the most conjecture misunderstanding, questions, all the things, including myself. I went through a stage when I first read the, the revision of the standard thinking about how we were going to be able to comply to this. Now, the standard has said that the battery needs to be installed outside of the habitable space. Um, now, Without going into you know uh, what that actually means and how we come to work out what that actually means is it then goes on to say the battery needs to be enclosed and vented um, externally, enclosed, vented externally. We are installing our batteries now inside enclosures. Those enclosures are fully sealed off from the inside of the van, and they are externally vented outside. So we run a filter medium outside the van so that we can then have um, the battery enclosure vented externally and we fully seal off the battery from the space. So in this particular van um, what I've done in here is I've created, I've created a, uh, an enclosure which is completely sealed off from the space. So as you can see, there's a, there's a battery inside this box. You can see the cables coming into the box. Everything is completely sealed off from the outside of the space. Sorry, from the internal, internal space. And we also have a vent, which vents the 
uh, the battery compartment externally outside the van. The other examples of where a battery could be installed, um, if you take this principle and apply it to an underbed solution, same thing, as long as, as, long as it's enclosed and vented externally. Um, some caravans come with generator boxes at the rear of the van or the front of the van. That's a great place for a battery because that absolutely, as long as it's vented, it complies. Um, just need to think about all the other installation requirements for that, volt drop, etc., etc. Um, tunnel boots are also being used for uh, installing batteries into. So you can actually install your battery inside the tunnel boot and create a safe space in there as well and vent that. That's fine. That's outside the habitable space. So there are a few variants of locations that you can install these batteries. And sorry, to clarify, this is actually for lithium ion batteries. And a lithium ion battery is any variant of lithium. So in our application, this is a lithium ion phosphate battery, but not that I'm suggesting that you would ever do this, but you could have any of the other chemistries of batteries installed as a deep cycle battery in your caravan. Not recommended, but they still need to comply with this standard. Okay, so just to summarize the battery location, the battery location needs to be sealed off from the habit habitable space and externally vented. They are the two major things that need to be done for a lithium ion battery. Sealed away from the habitable space, externally vented. Who needs to comply? First of all, anyone needs to comply. You need to be compliant if you want to make sure that you're ticking all the boxes from an insurance perspective. When do you need to comply is the next question. So if for it, I'll give you a couple of examples of when you need to comply. Um, if you have a caravan that has AGMs installed and you want to take it to lithium, that's an alteration and you need to comply. If you have a lithium battery already in your caravan, that's let's say a hundred amp hour, and you want to increase that size to 400 amp hour, that's an alteration and you need to comply. Uh, when don't you need to comply? If you've got a 200 amp hour battery and it requires replacement and you are only going to replace it with another 200 amp hour battery of equal chemistry and size, that's not an alteration, so you don't need to comply. You can just take that old battery out and you can put the new one in. Everything stays the same, no problems. Questions that we get asked quite a bit. Um, one of them is, for example, I've got a caravan with 200 amp hour of lithium and I want to take it from the chassis and bring it inside. Do I need to comply? Yes, you do. That's an alteration. So anytime you modify your system, um, that makes it different from how it was previously, then yes, that's an alteration. That needs to comply. So even though predominantly you could potentially get away with exactly the same components, that's rewiring the system, it will need to comply. We've, had a, we've also had some questions in relation to doing a modification of a van and leaving the battery boxes on the side of the van so that you don't need to comply with the standard. You do need to comply with the standard. The standard still needs to be complied to for all the reasons of um, installation practices. The only thing you wouldn't necessarily need to comply to is battery location. It's not recommended to install them down there. Not a lot of battery manufacturers will suggest that down there on the chassis is a great place for their batteries, um, uh, but it then doesn't need to comply to the habitable space external, vented externally because it is outside the van already. Hopefully it's been informative. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch um, and we'll do our best to answer them. Thanks guys.